Today is the second day of autumn and that means powerful breakthroughs will soon be happening. Because last autumn the Ukrainian armed forces liberated a huge part of Ukrainian territory and there was a lot of good news. So there is a possibility that we are on the verge of a new measure movement of our troops. Let's begin by noting that in the Kupensk direction Based on intelligence data, the Russian advance is being cancelled. According to preliminary information, there are artillery shelling without offensive actions because they are pulling reserves from Russian territory. However, due to the fact that the Ukrainian armed forces are firing daily at their positions and causing losses, they are bringing in units that are sufficient only for defense. For now, they cannot gather enough new assault brigades for a major offensive. It seems uh, they have a big problem with this now because losing 500 men daily is quite significant. Friends, before we continue, I kindly ask you to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. In the Svatova area, the occupiers continue to advance. Uh, it is known that they have deployed practically a tank battalion there. There are reports of at least 30 tanks and for the past few days they have been trying to break through our defenses. The Ukrainian armed forces are actively destroying their equipment so the Russians haven't made any progress along the front line. However, the battles continue and the challenge hasn't stopped either. Heavy fighting is taking place north of Novoyhorivka for Hill 190.8. These words are confirmed by the head of the press service of the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ilya Yevlash. Of the seven tanks destroyed during the day in the Lyman and Kupiansk directions, six are near Novoyhorivka. Eight assaults by the enemy took place there. However, as we noted earlier, there remains a serious problem of the inability to hit the crossings over the Zheribi arts. Because of this, the Katsaps have enough options for the movement of armored vehicles to Serhivka for further assaults on our fortifications. In the direction of Krimina and Siversk, uh, there have been no changes along the front line over the past day and the occupiers continue to shell because their attacks on Bilohorivka have once again failed. <laughs> So in the backward direction, the occupiers have halted their offensive actions and the Ukrainian armed forces in turn are conducting tactical battles and gradually advancing in the Andreevka area. If you look at the geolocation map, it confirms the words of our fighters that they are slowly moving towards between Kordyumivka and Andreevka. We see a small section of the front where they have managed to take some positions from the occupiers. The situation remains complex, the occupiers don't retreat easily and the battles continue. There is also information that Russian military forces are already refusing to engage in combat in the Klishivka area. ATESH agents from the headquarters of the 83rd Guard's Separate Airborne Assault Brigade report that their unit practices shooting servicemen for refusing to storm the positions of the Ukrainian military. A series of such incidents was recorded near the village of Kleshchivka, south of Bakhmut. The high command of the brigade not only does not stop this practice, but also puts the commanders that they are doing this as an example to other officers. For example, the commander of the 3rd Battalion. Such barbaric practices create unrest among the personnel of the brigade. Soldiers are ready to defend their lives from commanders with weapons in their hands. This is very unusual for a Russian unit, but the landing is some kind of elite. Of course, uh, this is unconfirmed information but where there is smoke there is usually fire and there is no doubt that such things can happen within the russian military additionally the commander of the joint forces of the ukrainian armed forces lieutenant general Sergei naev has released a video in which a russian cruise missile was shot down in recent days
Ну, яке відчуття? Відчуття, розумієш, що прикриваєш дуже багато людей і ні одного дитину. Після того, що вже надивилися, скільки людей вже пострадало, погибло, то як би собі навіть і не простив, якщо б її пропустив. Команда состоїть з чотирьох чоловік. Є у нас старший позиції, він слідкує за по спеціальному прибору, він слідкує, откуда йде ракета, він дає напрямок. Ну, один в полі не воїн. В будь-якому випадку мені підказують і коригують мною. Даним підрозділом ми збили дві цілі, один шахід і одну крилату ракету. От. Ну, що відчуваю? Це прості хлопці, які в силу обставин змушені займатися тепер військовою справою. Дуже багато залежить від взаєморозуміння, там, взаємо, так, взаєм, в той співпраці саме в той момент. Тому це молодці. Просто, ну, це, цим словом, можливо, не до кінця передається. Це справжні, справжні наші такі от, українці. Громадяни, от вони справжні. Можливо, це ключове буде слово. Конкретно ця мобільна вогнева група, яка має на озброєнні переносний зенітно-ракетний комплекс «Стінгер», вона за останні два тижні збила два засоби повітряного нападу. Це «Шахет» і 30 серпня ракета «Х-101». Їх ефективність дуже-дуже висока. Я щиро подякую вам хлопцям та впевнився, що вони підготовлені. Ми не стоїмо на місці, робимо все для того, щоб підвищити ефективність. However, the situation in Marinka remains unchanged. Offensive actions continue here regardless of the weather. The Russians advance and the Ukrainian forces destroy them, leaving their front line unchanged for a long time. Similarly, all attacks in the Novomikhailovka area have been unsuccessful and Shalom continues. In the Vuhledar direction, the situation remains stable with artillery exchanges taking place and no active offensive actions are being conducted. If you look at the geolocation map, you can see that the Ukrainian forces are actively destroying the enemy here as well. Strikes are made on both positions and enemy equipment. Therefore, the destruction of the Russian army doesn't cease for a moment. Furthermore, here we can see that the advancement of our troops in tactical battles in the Pryutny area is confirmed. Therefore, the initiative is with the Ukrainian armed forces. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Ukrainian armed forces are gradually breaking through the Russian defense step by step. Today there is very little left. However, this is the most challenging section on the front because the Russians are deploying all their forces to stop the advance. But they are not succeeding, so all experts and even Russian war correspondents report that the Russian army cannot stop the movement of the Ukrainian armed forces and every day the Ukrainians take some positions from the Russians. If you look at the geography of Ukrainian strikes, you can see that they are scattering the occupies in the Verbove area with some strikes concentrated in the direction of Takmak. Overall, we can expect good news in the near future. In the Kherson direction, the occupies continue shelling and some experts claim that they're already targeting the Kinburn Spit and the left bank because the Ukrainian troops are located there. However, the general staff doesn't confirm this information. We also see that the occupies often shell or Charkiv from the Kinburn Spit which indicates that this territory is under Russian control rather than Ukrainian. Therefore, we should wait for confirmed information about the presence of Ukrainian troops on the left bank. As of today, the situation remains unchanged with artillery exchanges taking place, and it is known that reconnaissance and sabotage groups may be moving to the left bank for certain operations. As we can see, things are not going well for the Russians. And the chief of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, has reported that Russian military have deployed units 
of a newly created reserve army to allow units currently on the front lines in the Lugansk region to reposition themselves for defense against a Ukrainian counteroffensive in southern Ukraine. So, Institute for the Study of War experts believe that the 25th Combined Arms Army is unlikely to be combat ready considering its rushed deployment. Additionally, Institute for the Study of War reports that the occupiers are disappointed <laughs> with Russian counter battery fire near Urajina and along the line of Novomayorsk, Novodonetsk, Kermenchik. Furthermore, Russian soldiers defending in this area are in poor physical condition and psychological distress. According to Institute for the Study of Why, Ukrainian forces have continued offensive actions near Bakhmut and in the western part of the Zaporizhia region, achieving some progress by September 1st. Your location footage shows that the Ukrainian forces have slightly advanced to the northwest of Klishivka. So the Ukrainian general staff has also reported Ukrainian success in the direction of Novodonilivka, Novoprokopivka, and in the western part of the Zaporizhia region. However, Russian sources claim that Russian forces repelled Ukrainian attacks near Botine and Verbove. Meanwhile, John Kirby, the spokesperson for the U.S. National Security Council, stated on July 1st, that the U.S. had seen significant progress by Ukraine in the Zaporizhia region over the last 72 hours, and Ukrainian forces had achieved some success on the second line of Russian defense in southern Ukraine. However, the 25th Combined Arms Army is unlikely to be combat ready on such a scale, given its rush deployment ahead of the previously announced deployment date in December 2023. Meanwhile, Politica has confirmed previous reports regarding the number of refurbished American Abrams tanks set to arrive in Ukraine by mid-September. So Politica confirmed that Ukraine will receive the first 10 out of the promised 31 refurbished American Abrams tanks by mid-September following repairs in Germany, citing a source from the U.S. Department of Defense and another source. Colonel Martin O'Donnell, the spokesperson for the U.S. Army in Europe and Africa, stated that the U.S. remains committed to delivering all 31 Abrams tanks at an unspecified time frame in the fall. O'Donnell also mentioned that 200 Ukrainian servicemen recently completed one of the final stages of training. However, Ukraine is unlikely to deploy the initial Abrams tanks, for example, two platoons, until the entire brigade is combat ready. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.